Welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. And this one's going to be a little bit um, different than uh, you may have expected. So, months ago, probably um, towards the end of last year in 2019, I created this effect here, the split face effect. It's actually proved to be one of the more um, popular videos on my channel. And basically, it's kind of an effect that I still teach when I'm teaching this in the classroom. So since the render pass came out, uh, obviously there's been a few little um, additions and tweaks and I've been sort of looking at the comments and queries I've been getting through the last few days since my last video. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can use render pass and face extraction uh, with the existing split face effect. So again, I'd recommend that you watch that video first if you haven't done so already, because this will basically continue from that effect. And we'll start looking at how we can use the face extraction, uh, render pass and the scene render pass alongside uh, look values to color grade our entire scene. So at the moment, this is an uncolor graded uh, little video here. I'll show you how to color grade it as an all, as an overall uh, effect. So we will start from the very beginning. So I'm just going to open up my uh, split face effect from the very start. So I'm not gonna go through how that's created again, watch the previous video um, on how this was effect, uh, effect was achieved and we'll continue from that point on. So let us begin. Okay, so here we have our split face effect that we generated in that video. Uh, the only um, amendment I made to this since that video is I've slightly increased the pixels on my um, textures. So I took this into Photoshop and just made the width and height a little bit um, higher so they overlap slightly. So that removes any potential alpha gap. So we have our materials with their alpha material set to be the texture that is appropriate to that quadrant. And again, that's explained in that video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our camera. We're going to go to texture extraction. And we're going to drag our camera texture into our patch editor. So we're going to need to capture everything that's within our scene, everything that's within our camera feed, everything that's happening live. So we're going to need our camera texture. And we're going to need to add our face extraction render pass. So this will say, continue with an effect, uh, these capabilities will no longer work, face extraction, uh, I want to remove other capabilities. So if we're using our face extraction render pass, um, face extraction as a material will no longer work. So we actually have to go about this in a kind of different way, hence why I'm doing a video on this. Um, so with my face extractor, extraction render pass created, I'm also gonna get a scene render pass. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up my camera texture to my camera texture input on my render pass for the camera, uh, face extraction, sorry, and for the scene render pass to the background. And then I'm going to go to my device, drag my device into my patch editor, and link my device out object output to my scene object in my scene render pass. I'm now going to select my four materials here. So left bottom, left top, right bottom, and right top. Go to my texture and click on the little arrow next to those. And I'm just going to connect my face extraction render pass to these materials. Now, because these materials already have our alpha uh, mat applied, it should still cut away the segment that we've asked it to using the color white as a kind of keep and the PNG transparency to say remove. I hook these up to my face extraction render pass. Like so. And at the moment, if you look at our little preview window here, you can see we've got this checkerboard, which means it's still got no data being fed through fully yet. So I've got to go to my device, go to my render output and click on the little arrow next to render pass and hook this up to my scene render pass. Like so. So we should have it looking like this at the moment. Now you still see we've got no material applied to those quadrants. They're actually invisible at the moment. That's because we need to tell it what face to track. So we're gonna to go to tracked face and I'm gonna use my face tracker. So if we had two characters or two people, we could actually face swap using this um, 
tracked object to extract the uh, opposite person's face, for example. I'm not going to apply a background to this, although if I wanted to um, create segmentation or just have the face on show, I could do so using this method. And at the moment, we have basically recreated that split face effect just using render passes now. Now, this, this is where we're going to go a little bit further and sort of start to look at um, LUTs with render passes. So what we need to do in order to apply a LUT to our render passes, we need to take our live feed and essentially combine that with our, um, our LUT value table, essentially. So the easiest way of doing that is actually to go to this GitHub page here, which I'll link in the description down below, which has a fantastic repository of patches created by this wonderful uh, gentleman here and alongside a little uh, guide on how to set it all up and um, some LUT examples. So you'll need to download this first. Once this is downloaded, I simply drag this, drag this into my um, effects here. So I'm actually just going to need to download that quickly. Download. There we go. And I'm just going to drag this into my project. So I've got this fast color LUT patch. Drag this into my patch editor. And what you'll notice here is if we zoom in just a little bit, you'll notice that we've got an input here for texture and an input here for LUT. So we're going to input our scene render pass output texture into our input on our fast color LUT and link our texture output from our fast color LUT to our device output. So this will cause us an error because it's missing texture at the moment. So we don't need to worry about that too much at the moment. This is where I'm now going to source a LUT value. So in this case, I'm going to use this inverted blue one here and drag this into my project. I'm going to then drag this material onto my patch editor and hook this up as my LUT input on my fast color LUT. So what this does, this will combine our camera feed with our lot value, so everything that's captured within that camera feed is now being combined with our lot value and then outputted to our device's uh, screen. So it's basically flattening everything that we've seen onto the device's full window. It does get a little bit more complex if you want to apply this to individual materials, and I'm still trying to find a um, sort of solution that is sort of works in most cases um, without too many. Um, idiosyncrasies going on. Uh, but basically, um, if I didn't like that LUT table, I could always just hook up a different one. So I could swap this out like so. And as you see, because we've got this LUT being combined with our camera feed, it's applying that to all of our materials. So the way we used to have to work with LUT values uh, is we used to have to apply each material had to be uh, then linked up to our LUT table independently. By using this scene render pass as our um, combiner or essentially our snapshot, it allows us to now take everything that's in our scene, our emitters, our 3D objects, our textures, our materials, everything that we've got and apply the same color grading to it uh, in one go. And like I said, if you want to apply this to individual materials, there's a slightly different process we need to follow, which we'll look at in a future video once we have a solution that I feel is um, suitable and as memory efficient as possible. So thank you for watching. Um, this will, is by the way, this example here will be included in the face split um, Gumroad package as of this video being made live. So if you haven't already got that available or you've already purchased it, you'll now be able to download this render pass version for free if you've already purchased it or uh, at no additional cost um, if you haven't. And again, that'll be down in the description box below. So remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.